All right, guys, the time is finally upon us. We have roster sharing. We've downloaded the best rosters that can possibly be made. Shout out to my man, Tugi. It is now time to do my yearly franchise mode series. Now, in the last two years, if you haven't been around the channel, we did the Buffalo Sabres in NHL 20. Had a blast. It was my first franchise mode run. I think it was over 30 episodes. Last year, we did the Ottawa Senators, and that was one of the most fun videos that I have recorded all the way through. So this year... I had to do some thinking. We're not going to do Buffalo. We can't do Ottawa. Could do Arizona. Could do Detroit, as I like to rebuild teams. But then it dawned on me. Finally, for the first time in 20 years of being a Sharks fan, they're bad enough to actually rebuild. So, without any further ado, this is No Sleeves 12 Franchise Mode Rebuild of the San Jose Sharks. Now, rebuilding the Sharks in a video game would be pretty simple, honestly. I mean, you could just trade away Brent Burns, Mark Edward Vlasic, get rid of Eric Carlson, and it would be pretty simple. But that's not challenging enough. Not on this channel. We are going to make it as hard as possible and keep it as real to the actual NHL as we possibly can. So here are the challenges for my San Jose Sharks rebuild. In terms of Mark Edward Vlasic and... Eric Carlson, I can't trade them. I can't move them to the AHL. I've got to keep them for the duration of their contract or at least until it's far enough away where I could do a buyout. That is the only way to get rid of these guys, so I'm going to try and rebuild because in the real thing, there's no way Doug Wilson's going to ever be able to move them. Brent Burns, on the other hand, I think he's kind of free range in terms of moving because he does have some value. Vander Kane, he's gone, but... In our first episode, I'm going to show you, we're going to keep it as real with Evander Kane as possible. I don't want him on the Sharks. The Sharks don't want him on the Sharks. The players don't want him on the Sharks. We are going to trade him to one of the six teams that are scouting him, but it's probably going to be Boston. Spoiler alert. But everyone outside of those guys, free range. Okay, I can move LeBanc. I can move Couture. I can move Tomash Hurdle, which would absolutely gut me. Even Timo Meyer, the face of this franchise rebuild, I could move. I won't. Spoiler. So guys, buckle up. And let's see if we can turn the Sharks into a powerhouse and actually win them a Stanley Cup. All right, so let's go over the setup of our franchise mode. And it's going to be pretty simple. There are some things. This will be a full sim, guys. I will not be playing any games when it gets to the big moments in the regular season or the playoffs, like elimination game or even just a playoff series in general with a close game. We will jump into broadcast mode and watch computer versus computer gameplay to see if we can get the dubs. But let's start out with the rebuild and the actual setup of our franchise mode so we're gonna go with classic i'm going to make the gm's name ron as ron sleevesy will be manning the ship here all right so as you see i have done Tugi's version 2 update for our rosters and we're gonna use the san jose sharks and like i said they are in some absolute brutal situations with some of the players on this roster like eric carlson and mark edward vlasic there's nothing we can do about that so let's go ahead and select them division alignment we're gonna keep the same now let's talk quickly about these settings because i think that there's some that just add too much randomness that I'm not a huge fan of that, especially when you're doing a full franchise sim. So owner mode is going to be off of all of the features that are still in franchise mode for NHL 22. Owner mode is still the most useless. It really doesn't add any value. It's just there to be there. And I hope in the future years it does get some love because, yeah, it's very boring and dry. Fantasy draft we're not doing. Sour cap will be on. GM firing will leave off for this. I don't think that will do bad enough. Fog of War is off. I like the thought of Fog of War, but... It just is like, again, it's very hit or miss, and I'm not a fan of doing it during franchise mode. Sims player morale, that honestly is still super broken, so we're not going to have that. CPU trades are on, and head coaches lines we're going to have off. So as you can see here, it's pretty simple. The only thing that will be on is the salary cap and the trades. Everything else will be off. Let's get into the overview and do some rules real quick. Now, for the first few episodes and at least the first season, I kind of want to turn injuries off. And the reason why is that I've done a ton of franchise modes, and injuries, while they are random, they do add some randomness to the actual sim. It doesn't give you a full like outlook of the team that you've built because they are completely random. That being said, I am I'm not opposed to actually turning them back on. So let me know in the comment section down below. Should I have injuries on? And if I have them on, I'd have to turn them down to like 15% because, well, I think that they just, you know, again, super random. And if you have it at like 50 or 80, they just get injured every single day. Kind of ruins the flow of the sim. So for this first season, we're gonna have them turned off. Everything else is pretty standard as you go down here. Again, the fog of war will be off. And yeah, that's 
pretty much all there is to it. We will have the auto rotate for goaltenders, but outside of gameplay sliders and like that, we are going to keep it pretty simple. I just don't really see the need to mess with any of this right now. And again, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. And if, you know, the franchise doesn't go the way that we're looking like in terms of the sim, we can look to mess with these. But for everything else, we're just going to keep it pretty similar. And let's get into our first season and see what we're working with all right guys so here we are main screen this is what we've got in the preseason we'll take a look at our lines and what we've got going we've got timo meyer as well as soma shirtle and bear Banoff, who as a sharks fan quickly becoming one of my favorite players he's just very electric with the puck and you wouldn't know it if you don't watch sharks games kevin lebanc who has fallen out of favor i'm not gonna lie i think it's time that we're gonna move on from him Logan Couture, one of my favorite players to watch as a Shark, especially in the playoffs. He just steps it up. Jonathan Dolan has been one of my favorite players to watch this season. I think he's actually going to be a legit top six player in the NHL. Andrew Cogliano, a few years too late for him. I've always liked Cogliano. Nick Bonino, who has been brutal offensively this season. Rudolph's Balsers, who again, much like Barabanov, you wouldn't know, but actually a half-decent player. Then we've got Matt Nieto, Jasper Weatherby. Goat name. Love it. And then Jonah Gajevich rounding out our player on forward. On defense, we've got Mario Ferraro, Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, Reddy Mushimek, Vlasic, and Nikolai Kanijov. And again, we'll mess with the lines here, but this is just what we're working with. And then in net, we've got James Reimer, who's had an unbelievable season to start the year, and Aiden Hill, who looks like just like a bigger version of Martin Jones. So, I hope he turns it around, but yeah, Aiden Hill doesn't look to be it. He gives up a goal in the first 10 minutes of pretty much every game, and uh, yeah. All right, we'll quickly look at the contract situation here. So cap space, we've got 3.28 million in cap space, so we can make a move to acquire a decent player. We've got Hurdle, who we're going to have to re-sign, and we will be trying to re-sign Tomas Hurdle. I think he's a phenomenal player in real life and in the game. And then we've got Logan Couture, who has got that $8 million deal for a long time. But I'm okay. He's the captain, right? He is. Uh, that's going to be a mess in a couple seasons, but we'll deal with it then. Timo Meyer at $6 million for two more and still an RFA. Brent Burns has got $8 million left for four more years. That's going to be an issue. And then Eric Carlson, I mean, 11.5 all the way until 27, 28, which... He is going to be here for the duration of this build unless we buy him out. We've got Mario Ferraro, who we've got to re-sign quickly, becoming one of the better top four defensemen in the NHL. Love watching him play. Kevin LeBanc, he's getting just under five for three years. It's got to go. Then we've got Nick Benino for $2 million for two. That's fine. Nothing really there. Jonathan Dolan's going to have to be re-signed. We will be re-signing him. Rudolph Balsers, he's got a decent contract for the two seasons. Bear Banov will have to be re-signed. Redim Shimmick probably going to move this season in-game because, again, my goal so far, I'm a big proponent of Brian Burke. You either get good fast or you get bad fast. And the Sharks are in that classic spot where they're good enough to not get a top five pick, but bad enough to not make the playoffs. And that is the worst place to be in all of sports. So we are going to do our damnedest to try and get as bad as we possibly can to get some of the top five picks, especially in the first two seasons, because there are some franchise players in those first two drafts. And again, with all of the rosters done by Tugi, we want to make sure we get into the top five picks. So we're going to have to make some moves and we're going to start early. Vlasic, seven million for f <laughs> ah, that hurts me. He was so good. Kanija will have to be resigned. Cogliano can go. Nieto is on a decent contract. Weatherby's fine. Gadjevich. And then we'll take a look at the system because <laughs> we got Evander Kane, who we're going to have to move because I can't stand him. We've got Jake Middleton, who's not bad, honestly, on the back end. And then William Eklund. So our prize possession, probably, if you were redrafting right now, let me know in the comments section down below. But, I mean, Owen Power still goes one, I think. I mean, he's having a great year, and he still looks to be, like odds on to be one of the best NHLers out of this draft, but would you not take Eklund too? After seeing what he did in the first nine games, I know he got sent back to Europe, but watching him, he was extremely good with the puck. He was composed. While he is small, he got his nine games and played really well. It was actually kind of sad, but the Sharks are in a position where they can't really burn a year of his contract for cap reasons, obviously, so it made sense to send him back, but he looks like he's going to be one of the best, and honestly, because of the COVID draft, I mean, you're going to see, this is again just a rant about that season, but you're going to see players in the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds that are just going to explode come out of nowhere because the OHL didn't play like the amount of players that just did not play you didn't get to see them play I think you're gonna see a lot of kind of insane booms at the back end of that draft and William Eklund falling to seven for the Sharks was just awesome so he is gonna be our biggest prize possession in terms of prospects he's not going anywhere we've got John Leonard had a cup of coffee during the COVID year wasn't very good we've got Nick Merkley we've got uh Bortolo <clears throat> 
excuse me, and we've got Passion Chuck, he's not very good. Ryan Merkley as well. I mean, it's about to... If there's one team that does not need an offensive-minded right-handed defenseman, it's the Sharks. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with him. And that's really it. Ozzy Weisblatt, our first-round pick last year. Not bad, but, um, you know, the, obviously the prospect pool is still really weak. I mean, Eklund saved us from having, you know, nothing. Um, but we've got some work to do, and I really want to do some work in these first two years. So the first thing I want to do, guys, is deal with Evander Kane. So if you haven't been following everything that's going on with Evander Kane, I'll give you the TLDR. It's just enough. He needs to get away from the franchise. I don't even know if he needs a fresh start. I think that he just needs assistance in general. But he does look like there's six teams that are vying for his services. And I mean, in his first AHL game, he had four points. He's not going to be in the AHL for very long. And honestly, it looks like the front runner is the Boston Bruins. And there's a really easy one that fans and you know uh, have just kind of pointed out. And that is DeBrusque. He's just kind of run out of favor with the Bruins. And it looks like he needs a change of scenery. So while this one for one, there's no way that happens. Because Evander Kane just comes with so many personal issues that there's no way a team is just going to take him straight up. So the only way that's fair to actually get this done is we are going to take 50% of Evander Kane's contract. Because I don't see how. I mean, Doug Wilson... I'll, Bias aside, he's been one of the best general managers. He's pulled off some of the biggest trades in the history of the NHL. He'd find a way to get a Vander Kane. I don't see how he doesn't do it with, or uh, how he does it without getting rid of half of his contract. So we are going to do that. DeBrusque for a Kane and half of his contract for the next four years. DeBrusque has only got one year left at 3.6, and we'll have to figure out what to do. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below of this deal. But we're going to go ahead and send it. And obviously, in game, they're going to accept this, right? So. DeBrusque is going to be on the team, and he's going to play in the NHL. I'm not going to lie. I want to do as bad as possible, so we are going to uh, probably move him. I'm not going to lie. In terms of the other players I want to move this year, just judging by overalls, just going down the list, Brent Burns is a potential. I love Brent Burns. I don't want to see him ever go, but... Again, we try, we're try. we trying to make this team as bad as possible while still having Eric Carlson, who's pretty decent, Couture, Hurdle, Meyer, who are all very good. It's going to be very difficult to have a really bad team while having these players that I don't really want to move. So guys like Burns have got to go. LeBanc has got to go. And I'd be curious to see what we could get for LeBanc, but we'll go through it and take a look at that a little bit later. The next thing that we need to do, guys, is we need to set up our scouting. And I want to show you guys the best way um, to kind of do scouting and everything like that because there is a very, very effective way to do this. I'm not going to lie because Fog of War is off. That kind of gives us some flexibility where we don't need any NHL or AHL scouts. So I'm going to go ahead and fire all of the AHL and NHL scouts because you just don't need them. And then we're going to go ahead and try and sign uh, all of the other uh, all of the other scouts that we need. So we're going to sign uh, at least three for the OHL. Right now we've got one. Same with the Q and the WHL. We're going to have at least three for each of those. We'll do some for Europe and a couple for Russia and the US. But I'm going to go ahead and speed through that so you guys don't have to watch that. And we'll come back and I'll show you the scouting staff and how you effectively scout in NHL 22. Now the one thing I do want to mention is when you're hiring scouts, guys, so I'm looking for some for the WHL just off the rip now it does say that their overall is a c but you want to make sure that the region familiarity for where they are going to scout is as high as possible so you see mason de salvatore his ah or he's a c overall scout but his whl region is an a which is great as you go down and you'll see see this is an a minus for jason york a plus for angelo buckley and as you go down like so brandon lamb for example he's a c overall just like all of these other guys but his, his whl is a b so you obviously don't want him as as opposed to some of these other guys. Their overall doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. You really want to focus on region familiarity because you're not moving them around. You want to keep them in the WHL or whatever region that you're looking at. All right, guys, so I have finished all of the scouting assignments. And as you can see, I'm just searching or I'll just sort by region. I've got three in the WHL, four in the OHL. I've got four in the Q, as well as one for each of the USA regions, uh, as well as an extra one in USA East, which I'm probably going to move. We've got one for extra legion, SHL, I've got two. And then Liga and Russia, I've each gotten one. Something that you want to pay attention to. So every year, if you go and look at the draft class, right, if you hit Y and go to change region, okay? So we'll use uh, North America as an example here. So you click on North America, and we'll do CHL. And again, I you see that I have a lot of scouts. And that's because if you look at the overall amount of players from each of these regions, it's far higher. So right now, there's 182 forwards, 105 defensemen, and 32 goalies from, uh, from the WHL. You go over to the O, it's 100. 
127, 61, and 19. And then the Q is 149, 95, and 90, and 32. If you go and look at, let's say, the goal or the, the USA, it's a lot less. So while this one's got 26, 12, and 2, 27, 16, and 2, and then 23, 13, and 2. So you don't need more than one scale for each of these regions, and I'll show you why in just a little bit, because there won't be a lot of top-end talent that you actually want to draft. Same with Nordic. If you go and look, like, uh, again, Alaska Vans got 11, 11, and 2. Uh, SHL's got a few. That's why I have more than one. And then Liga also has quite a few as well, so I'll have two for Liga. And you just want to make sure that you don't have multiple scouts in regions that where you don't need it. And here is why. So what you want to do, we'll do the OHL as an example. So this is the best way to scout in NHL 22. And it hasn't really changed from the last year. So we'll go ahead and we'll go scout specific players. All right. Now what you want to do is go ahead and get rid of any of the ones that they have listed here. And here is the best way and formula of how to scout the best players and make sure that you get the most bang for your buck. So what you want to do is start going through and you want to choose potential and comparison because that is the most important aspect when drafting because you you might only he might only be 60 overall but if he's a, a medium elite that you find in the fourth round this is how you're going to do it by searching the potential and comparison so if you go down and you'll want to make sure that you set it up you'll see the estimated date in the bottom right here so january 5th 2022 if you can try and get it to about let's say uh just before january 1st that's the best way to do it because once you've done it once you want to set it up again where you do it again in April. And then after April, when it ends there, you go all the way to the draft. And why you want to do this is because there's no reason to keep drafting or scouting outside as you get down because these are the ones that you really want to pay attention to. Now, obviously, in the OHL, there's a lot more prospects this year that are higher end. Um, again, this also is a custom roster, so that might play into it. But you want to make sure that you're not going all the way down. So, like, we'll use another one as an example. We'll go and take a look at USA because I just mentioned the USA. So, we'll go USA West and we'll go scout-specific players. They have a much less they have much less players in their region, okay? So, as you can see here, it quickly drops. Eichel is now 156 in the CS rankings. And as you go down, it gets even further and further. So, if you're scouting guys right here, it's like, what's the point? Because you're not really going to draft them anyway. So, you have to make sure that you're not going too far. So what you want to do, I'll set this one up perfectly. So you go potential comparison, potential comparison, and just keep going. And you don't want to go any further. I mean, we're getting kind of further here, but there's really not that many in the system. To make things easy on you, just go until the end of December. So December 28th. So on December 28th, I'm going to come back and redo all of my scouting prospects. So that makes sure that I get all of the potential comparison for these guys. The next thing you want to remember is, so you see down here that the last one is Shaw. Okay, so now go ahead and remove them all. And here's the next tip. All right, go down to Shaw. Start with Shaw. Potential comparison. And why you want to do that is because it bumps them down in reverse order. So the guys that you want dra or scouted first are the higher end ones. So Trevor Lyon is a right defenseman. His consensus ranking is 13th overall right now. You want him scouted first. And that's going to matter more when you go and do it again. Because if they don't get through this list and you leave, let's say, Trevor Lyon into the last, he might not get as scouted as you get closer to the draft because you left them to last each time. So you want to do it in reverse order. Once you've done that, hit start, and that will select and make sure everything's done. And now my USA West is done. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for every single region. Again, I'm going to edit and skip this through. All right, guys, so I have gone through and I've done it all. You'll see the estimated date up there is December 28th for all of my prospects. So on December 29th, I'll go ahead and do it again, and they will they will scout again until about, I believe, April 1st, and then we'll do it one more time before the draft. And I found this is the most effective way to get the best players so that you're not wasting your time by drafting guys that just shouldn't be drafted. And it's the best way to find, like, the high elites in, like, the later rounds. So just a tip there. Now that we've gotten our scouts out of the way, it's time to deal with the coaching staff. Now, the coaching staff is extremely important because if they don't match up with your players, it doesn't matter how many great players you have you really miss out on them gelling and getting those big line boosts and overall boosts. So we'll take a look at Nolan Barnaby. And something that I really want to focus on, guys, is having a high teaching stat. Because if they have a high teaching stat, then it really helps with younger players and prospects. And while I want to grow my the Sharks and get rid of all of their older players, the ones that I'm allowed to, and then draft out prospects and really start teaching them. So that's going to be important. But the one thing that you need to pay attention to is the chemistry for certain players so 
He's got a 51% team fit, but he perfectly fits Logan Couture. Hurdle's okay. Meyer is really good. All the other guys are going to be gone, so you want to pay attention to the players that are going to be on your team for a while. Now, he has Hurdle, not very high, obviously about 50%. Couture is a perfect fit, which is great, and Meyer as well is just past 50%. We're going to get rid of LeBanc, so he doesn't matter. Ferraro and Carlson are concerning because they'll, they'll both be on the team for quite some time. But then Dolan, Balsers, Barabanov, they all fit really well, and I think they'll be there for quite some time. We got to take a look, though, at some of the other coaches that are available because, well, you know, if there's a better fit, then we've got to go ahead and use another. For, the problem is, is, in the first year, there is usually many that are avail available. So Colin Rycroft, his teaching stat is very low, which is something that just isn't really going to work. However, Hurdle, Couture, and Meyer all fit perfectly. Ferraro a little bit more, and Dolan and Balses are okay. This is a much better fit for the players that we're going to keep. And then Zach Gordon, 62%. What's his teaching? That's a B. That's not bad. And then he's got Hurdle, Couture, Meyer very high. Ferraro's much higher. Dolan Balsters and Barabanov. In all honesty, I think I'm going to go ahead and try and grab Zach Gordon. We'll see if we can hire him. Because, yeah, the coach that we have right now just isn't really going to mesh with what we're going to have left. We can take a look at some of the other players or guys that we have on the roster in terms of the coaching staff. But he's on a B- in Martinick. And then Colbert's got an A- minus as well. But he's not incredible by any stretch of the imagination. The other thing that's super important. Okay, so for the AHL head coach, this is extremely important. Because while we're doing this rebuild, I need to rebuild the Sharks. But what's more important is when you start drafting and signing players to play on your AHL team... You never know if they're really going to mesh well eventually when they get up to the NHL. There's nothing worse than drafting a player, having him come up in the AHL, and then when you bring him into the NHL, he doesn't fit your coach. You want to find a coach that's going to be on your team long term because if they don't fit the chemistry and you've spent three years trying to build them, you just kind of wasted that. So what you want to do when hiring a coach, so again, we'll try and hire uh, Gordon, for example, right? So when you go and hire him, the thing that you want to pay attention to and try and make as close as possible is this screen right here. So the lineup strategies, the hold line pinch cycle, all of that, it's going to look very confusing, okay? But if you take a picture of it, you want to find an AHL coach that fits this as close as possible. Sometimes it's going to take forever. The thing I want you to not worry about, though, is their overall. Go through and find the head coach for the AHL team. It could be a D-level coach, okay? And find the one that matches who you're going to have as a head coach perfectly, as, well, as perfect as you possibly can, so that you know when you're developing your players and on your team that when they become up to the NHL, they'll slide right in where you need them to slide in. So good news is Zach Gordon did sign on. He's got A- in coaching, and he fits the team quite well for the players that we are going to keep. So that really just checks off all the things that we're looking for. So now what we've got to do is go and find the rest of our coaching staff to try and make them work. And again, you want to make sure that the teaching is the most important early on when you're doing the rebuild. So I'm probably going to get rid of Martinuk. I'm also going to get rid of Mark Colbert as well. Actually, he's got A-, minus. that's fine. And the goalie coach as well. You just want to find one that specializes in goaltender. And again, I'll show you that in a little bit. But the AHL one, again, we're going to have to go through and find somebody that fits the scheme, which obviously isn't always the easiest. So we'll fast forward that and I'll try and find as a coach. All right, so that's all done. And I was actually pretty lucky that Kimberly Mann perfectly matched up with all of the line strategies and all of that perfectly matches our head coach in the NHL, which is actually kind of hard. Usually you get pretty close, but not exact, but I was actually able to get it to 100%, and she's actually not a bad coach at all, only a B-. minus. So Gordon is going to be our head coach for the first few seasons as we try and rebuild these Sharks, but now it's time to just go ahead and take a look at the lines first. We'll edit them to try and get them to where I think they are perfect in terms of just like chemistry and who's going to be there, and then we'll start seeing about, you know, making trades and things like that. All right, so it looks like we've gotten things set to where I think they should be. So we've got Meyer, Hurdle, and Barabanov. They get a plus five, which is a huge bump, obviously. We've got LeBlanc, LeBlanc, LeBanc, Couture, and DeBrusque, who we just traded for. And then Bolsers, Dolan, Nieto on the third line. Doesn't really mesh, but that's okay. And then we've got Weatherby, Benito, and Cogliano. They're not really going to be important for the future, so I'm all right with that as well. On defense, we've got Ferraro and Burns at a plus three. Carlson and Vlasic at a plus three. And then Kanijov and Radim Shimek at a plus five. I'm not going to lie, this team with all of the chemistry boosts is actually pretty decent, and James Reimer in net. We are going to have to make some trades pretty early and I have a feel if cuz I have a feeling that if we don't the team is just going to actually win a lot of games. In the AHL, we'll take a look here. I haven't done this yet, so we'll go ahead 
and I'll take a look and see where we can, you know, kind of put some players and uh, if there's anyone that we need to sign, things like that. All right, so we've gone ahead and edited the AHL as well. William Eklund will be in the AHL this year with Nick Merkley and John Leonard. Ozzy Wiseblood I put up on the second line because I want him to get a lot as many minutes as he possibly can with Chemlevsky and Daniil Gushkin from my Niagara Ice Dogs. I'm not going to lie, I love watching this kid play in real life. And I'm a huge Ice Dogs fan, so uh, he's going to be on the team in this rebuild for quite some time. Even if he doesn't make the NHL, he'll be on the AHL pretty much the whole time. And then we've got Peterson, Rasko, Blitchfeld, Brandon Coe, Reedy, and Habelwax, which is a crazy name. On defense, we've got Jacob Middleton, who's actually really good in the NHL. I think next year he might. I mean, this year he's a full-time player, but he might actually become something. Ryan Merkley, another year in the AHL. Mark Alt with Passionchuk, and then Kniazhev and Malosh on the back end. And then in net... We've got Melnichuk and Sachenko. We'll see about Sachenko, but Melnichuk, I mean, I don't know. In the real thing, I want to see him do more, but we'll have to wait and see. So that's all set, guys. We've done all of the rosters and edited, you know, everything that we need to. We've got the coaching staff done. The scouting staff is done. Now we really just have to go to the regular season and sim through a little bit and see where we're at because, again, the goal this year is to do as bad as we possibly can while keeping Carlson and Vlasic. And if we get into the trade deadline, hopefully we can move out Burns and all those guys for top-end picks because we want to try and get our shot at Shane Wright. So let's go ahead and sim through the first part of the season and see where we end up. All right, so while simming, guys, we got our first trade offer for Kevin LeBanc. We did put him on the trade block. Uh, two third-rounders this year here from Nashville, theirs and LA's. I'm going to decline this, although I think that like Los Angeles picks can be pretty decent. I think we can get a second rounder at least for LeBanc. However, we did get one for Benino, a second rounder from Columbus and a seventh rounder from Toronto. I think that might be the play, but you know what? Let's do this actually. Let's see what we can actually get for these guys real quick. Uh, just because I'm curious if we could get a better offer. So let's go ahead and see if we can find a trade. We'll do one at a time. I don't want to trade out five guys at once because that just really wouldn't happen. But we'll do Benino first. So we'll go ahead and see what we could get for him. Uh, Colangelo and two fourths. We could get a second. Okay, so we could get a second next year and the NIM Ducks fourth. Uh, a Boston second this year and next year. There's a lot. Carolina second. Hmm. We'll go through here and just see. Obviously, we want a second from Chicago. Interesting. I have a feeling they'll sim very well. Shane Bowers and two-thirds. That one's not interesting at all, actually. We got a second from Columbus. Second from Dallas. Nashville wants a second and a fourth. Nick Ritchie, superstar from the Toronto Maple Leafs. A third and a fourth next year. Mm, a second this year in Nick Ritchie. I'm thinking I like the Boston two... Uh, they're going to be half decent, though. That makes it tough. A Chicago second and third plus Kayumov. Hmm, we will need bodies, so let's take a look at Kayumov. And low top six. You know what? That's a Vegas third and a second this year. You know what? Let's go ahead and pull the trigger. Let's go ahead and pull the trigger. We'll have to bring somebody up. And we'll see who we're going to put in here. So Noah Gregor is going to jump into the fourth line. That's fine. Again, we want to try and get worse quickly. So Benino gone makes our top or our bottom six a little bit worse. And Noah Gregor, I actually like in real life. So next up, we've got to see what we can do about Lebrusque and sorry, Debrusque and LeBanc. That one might have to come sooner than later, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, guys. So we are at the Christmas break, essentially, in December. So it's December 22nd, and it's pretty much the worst case scenario. We are 18, 10, and 3, second in the division with 39 points. We are way up on a really high draft pick right now, and this is not what I wanted. We'll take a look real quick. Tomash Hurdle, he's got 35 points uh, in 31 games. Myers lighting it up as well, Coach Hurst. So the high-end guys are doing well. Barabanov's got 22 and 31, which is great. LeBanc as well. I think we've got to try and make the moves over the Christmas holidays to try and get as worse as possible because, again, I really don't want this team to try right now because I don't think they're good enough to win the Cup and would just miss out on these really high-end prospects. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to move on from LeBanc first. We'll see what we can get for Kevin LeBanc. And uh, yeah, I, I, we've, we've just got to get rid of him. There's nothing. He's doing half decent, which unfortunately I wish in the real thing was going on, but 
So, a second this year would be nice. So, man, Shane Bowers, what is he? A medium top six. I'm curious, because that's like a decent prospect, I feel. Uh, he's still actually, no, he's 68 overall. You know what? No, let's not do him. So, I mean, the Anaheim Ducks second and a fourth, I think, is probably the play. Again, we'll just get as many assets as we possibly can. So, we're going to go ahead and take this one. Kevin LeBanc is gone for a second and a fourth. And, uh, you know, that's a decent haul. I didn't think I was going to get a first for him, so that's okay. So, we'll have to replace him in the NHL, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now things are looking pretty rough. Balsers goes up to the second line with DeBrusque, Meyer, Hurdle, Barabanov is still a very good line. And Barabanov's even doing fine at 80 overall. And he's only, I mean, he's old at 27, which kind of sucks. But, uh, you know, I wish he would have got a shot early on. Like I said, he's very, very fun to watch in the real thing. Dolan, I would like to move up to the wing. So maybe when we move to Brusque, we can move Dolan up there and maybe call up a center. But we've got some more moves to make. And on the back end, like I said, we can't move Vlast. We can't move Carlson. Burns, I would like to not move yet because I don't think that's realistic this year. And then Riddim Shimek, we can move on from as well. And they're actually having a really good season as well. So we definitely want to kind of start messing with that. Again, we're trying to lose as many games as possible here. And we'll take a look around the NHL as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the other players are doing. Just like who's leading the league. Again, we are using Tukey's rosters, the version 2. And there is Kaprizov, 49 points in 32 games. Lucas Raymond, 48 and 32. Jonathan Taves having a resurgent. Vrana, Point, Pacioretty. There's McDavid. How many goals? Who's leading in goals? It's Kaprizov with Vrana and Pacioretty. And what about rookies? We'll take a look at the rookie skaters and obviously Raymond. But then there's Zegris, who's been electric. Bill Tomasino, ex Niagara Ice Dog got Pitlick, Janot. We've got more at Cider as well. So that's pretty interesting, though those races will heat up as we go. But I think going into the next video, guys, we do need to get worse and quickly because we can't go into January with the same team that has gone 18, 10, and 3. I wish this was going on in real life, but I just, it will not. So uh, again, let me know what you think of the first episode, guys, of the San Jose Sharks rebuild. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm excited to see where this series goes. I'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys.